So um, yeah, I'm here today, basically not to just to talk about HTML5 in general, why it's so cool and why you should need it. Uh, basically, I'm here today just to give you uh, an idea why and how HTML5 uh, gaming is working right now, so that you can really make money with HTML5 games, which I think is uh, the most important issue for every developer when deciding on switching to HTML5. Um, some words about myself. Um, I'm for a very long time already in the gaming industry, for more than 10 years. Uh, I founded different companies from development uh, to publishing. I did everything from mobile to social. And um, from, but since 2010, or in 2010, I decided to focus uh, a bit more on, on, on HTML5 gaming. Um, and that's also the reason why Soft Games today is operating the biggest HTML5 gaming portals out there. We have more than 10 million unique users on these platforms. Uh, with more than 200 games, actually. Um, what we do, um, there's two sides. Uh, on the one hand, we are helping portals, game portals, to fill up their inventory with um, engaging cross-platform games. And on the other side, for the developers, we do a lot of sponsorships. Um, as I said, like 200 games we have live already. And uh, help them to distribute um, their games globally. OK, so let's get started with a very short overview of how the casual gaming landscape currently is um, yeah, structured. Um, let's say it's pretty easy. Um, on the one hand, we have the PC uh, gamers, or the, the desktop gamers, who are still uh, yeah, having the majority, let's say, there, with a lot of people making a lot of money. And on the other hand, we do have, uh, for sure, tablet and mobile uh, um, devices, where people are just going to the app stores, downloading, and enjoying the games. Um, let's start at first with a look to the Flash games, um, because a lot of people don't have this uh, on, on, their, uh, on the screen anymore. Um, so Flash games, um, now they're extremely old. I mean, like everybody might know Flash gaming as well here. Um, it's still the dominant platform for casual gaming on the PC, um, because basically because like everybody, almost everybody, do have a Flash game player or a Flash game plugin installed on their PC. Um, Adobe made a um, research a while ago uh, uh, on across like the um, uh, gamers on gaming flash game port gaming portals, and they found out that almost 99% do have a flash um, gaming plugin or flash flash plugin in installed. And what is most important, especially for developers, it's currently um, a very very healthy ecosystem. What means um, that developers are it's, it's very easy for them to find distribution and they find the users. And they have found also a way to uh, make money with their games. And for sure, we all know um, Flash um, generated like huge, huge hits, um, like I don't know, Bejeweled, Zoomer, and whatever. Um, but the problem is, we all know Flash games are dying. And um, there are like, still a lot of people who say, like, no, no, Flash games are not dying. Flash games are cool. Flash is uh, the best ever, and all this stuff. But if you look to the numbers, you can understand that Flash gaming is not the future anymore. Um, so for sure, everybody who is doing Flash games should switch to HTML5, probably, or also to, to the mobile side. Um, because you can see, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, obvious um, desktop uh, shipments or PC shipments are declining or are stable over the last uh, years. And on the other side, um, tablets and smartphones are going just crazy. Um, and the biggest proof, actually, that um, Flash gaming's Flash games are dying. Uh, is that Mochi Media shut down their uh, um, yeah their offices or their operations by end of uh, March of this year? I'm like, who doesn't know Mochi Media right now? Just raise your hand. A lot of, lot of people probably. So like Mochi Media was basically the um, the yeah main uh, distribution channel for uh, main distribution source for for flash game developers where they can go. And they could upload the game, they got distribution, they got monetization, they got analytics just from one hand, actually. So was Mochi Media was the instance for Flash gaming. Um, so they shut down basically due to one reason, because they can never build up any business beside Flash gaming. So no mobile, just Flash. Um, yeah. So what is everybody doing now? Sure, everybody is doing apps. Everybody is doing mobile games. Yeah. So if I can ask you again, like who of you is doing mobile games as well? Just please once again. Um, yeah, a few people doing this, and I think everybody of you is dreaming about um, the following that they have again, the next Flappy Bird, um, so that you're in the top charts with having, without paying that much money for any any PR or without any marketing and just with luck over the last uh, night. Um, but the reality actually is um, to have such a success like Flappy Bird is that you need a, at least 50,000 downloads to get in the top 25 in US only in the free game chart. 
So 50,000 downloads. Um, so if you ask now yourself um, how much downloads I do have uh, every day, then you might probably think, okay, hey, mm -hmm, it might be something around 500, because this is the average um, game uh, download, uh, amount of game downloads like an uh, uh, average developer has today. Um, so the thing what you have to do not now is um, for sure marketing. Everybody tells you about, okay, come on, bring me your budget, and I drive you a lot of installs on your games. Uh, but the reality is that basically you will always pay more uh, if you're not had really um, the, the brilliant uh, guys from Supercell or whatever. Um, uh, you always pay more for the users you acquire than what, you, that, that what they bring you back. So doing this, um, like doing acquisition, user acquisition um, with high marketing budget, means that you have either a very brilliant marketing guy who knows how to acquire users on a, um, yeah, on a good basis or on a, on a profitable basis, or you just find other ways, uh, with PR or mouth-to-mouth -mouth propaganda or I know, reality, for example. And um, the, big, uh, yeah, the, the big budget thing is another problem uh, for the most of the developers because like, most of them do not earn money. Um, so like 6% of the average game developer earns uh, $500 or less um, for um, each game per month. So not that much, I would say. So I'm here today just to give you an introduction uh, to an alternative, which basically is HTML5. Um, you can decide after the talk uh, if you want to go this, uh, this way or you want to uh, keep going and, and hoping for, your fluffy, for the next Flappy Bird, uh, actually, or you think about, okay, hey, HTML5. Why HTML5? Um, the thing is, you know, um, instead of competing with hundreds of thousands of developers out there, you're competing with a few hundreds. Um, instead of competing with millions of apps out there, you're competing with a few thousand uh, uh, out there. And the other thing is you now, um, like HTML5 games currently are very simple because with HTML5 you can do 2D casual games very easily and very quickly. If you're trying to do um, 3D hardcore freemium whatever games, then probably stay with uh, mobile app development. Um, the other thing as well is um, with HTML5 on the HTML5, my God, on the HTML5 games market. Sorry, uh, it's like now like this that um, the developers don't have to run behind the publishers and have to show them, hey, please, please look at my game and probably you like it and probably I will make a big deal with you. It's, a, uh, it's another way. Um, the publishers are actively looking for HTML5 developers. They are screening the forums, they are screening the conferences, and they are trying to really find good developers who have an HTML5 game. I mean, um, this is something which probably in a game developer uh, is like heaven for a game developer on, on the native side. And um, the main question probably is, um, also what a lot of people are asking me over the time is, can I really earn money with HTML5? And yes, um, how much can I earn? And I found uh, this chart which shows you exactly that uh, HTML5 games, or in the HTML5, HTML5 games market is way more lucrative than most of the people are thinking. Uh, as you can see, um, like the, the, the gray line shows you um, everything, like the amount of, or the percentage of developers who earn less than $500 per month per app. Then the green one is uh, 500 to 10K, uh, and the, um, these two bars are 10K and above. So like this one is here, the top uh, bar, of the 50K and above per month per app. Um, when you can see HTML5 is not here, where Windows Phone is, HTML5 is behind iOS. And the good thing as well is that the, these two bars here um, are almost having the same size. So when you're doing HTML5 games, the chance to get um, one of these top developers, to become one of these top developers, is way higher. Because as I said, um, you have low competition uh, and you can make games way, way easier. Um, so just again, think about that you come here very, very easy. Um, when you say, okay, hey, cool, let's, let's do this, I want to earn this money, um, there are different ways to earn this money. Um, one thing which most of the developers are doing, actually, is um, to sell exclusive or non-exclusive licenses uh, to them. Um, the price range, I just gave a range over here, is like between five to five, $500 to $5,000. Uh, uh, $5, there are few developers, also they do more, they earn more for one single um, game, with going up to ten, fifteen thousand $15,000, but this is um, just, happening sometimes, let's say. Um, the other thing is, you know, um, some publishers do as well revenue share of the in-game advertisements. Um, so the normal way is also, again, 50-50. If you're lucky or if you have like a big IP or a brilliant idea or whatever, you can get more up to 70 as well here. 
And the other possibility, which probably is not there also for um, app developers or native game developers, is that um, you can distribute the game by yourself. Uh, and you can get used, the, uh, you can use all the old or existing Flash game channels, like all the Flash game portals. They are now accepting uh, HTML5 games as well. And the thing is, um, this is like a really cool new uh, way or opportunity for you as a developer to try out new channels, to try out if people really like my game, and to uh, enhance your game uh, also based on the feedback you get directly from the, from the, uh, from the users. And as well, you can uh, earn, uh, you can put uh, advertisement inside and just earn per thousand impressions around $2.50 here. Um, if you think now, Okay, that's cool. I want to try um, to become an HTML5 game developer. I just try to put like three very simple uh, uh, points here how to get uh, started. The first thing for sure is like, okay, hey, think about what's the best business model for you. I can tell you, um, for Get Freemium, do uh, everything ad monetization, ad monetization or ad based um, stuff here. Then, as again, um, we don't need um, 500 fluffy birds. Um, nobody needs um, I don't know, 10,000, 2,048. Um, go on the popular portals and think about, okay, hey, what kind of game is not there? And as I said, um, we do have 200 games. Um, like a spiel games, we have probably 500 games. So it's pretty easy to find uh, like your exactly niche uh, where you are the expert in. Probably it's a match three game, or probably it's a puzzle game, or it's an endless runner game, or whatever. There is for sure a game idea which is not already on HTML5. And as said, the publishers will be very, very happy to take your game when it's a new, brand new idea. Um, most important thing I want to um, yeah, point out here is that you have to keep an eye on the quality. What quality means for a publisher um, is another uh, presentation of me, so it takes another uh, 20 minutes. Uh, but if you're interested in this, you can go uh, look up for my name, Alexander Krug, and HTML5 on YouTube, and you'll find a presentation where I'm talking about, okay, what quality means for a publisher and how to sell your game to, to a publisher, actually. Um, when you're decided, okay, I'm, I'm going to do, I don't know, a match three game, for example, um, the next hint I'm trying to give, or I want to give you is um, don't think now, okay, I'm building my own really fancy cool engine. Um, forget about this. There are tons of other engines out there who are free to use and which are, where the whole community is working the whole day on to make them better. So go there, choose one uh, engine. Um, no, I don't want to say choose that engine or that engine uh, because it doesn't make sense. You know, it depends on what you prefer uh, at the end of the day. I can just say, it, for example, like uh, PixieJS or Phaser, for example, they're good for 2D games. Uh, Construct 2 are good for uh, physics games. But each of these engines do have its pros and cons. Um, so go there and, and do your research. There are tons of uh, resources out there in the internet. And then at, uh, last but not least, um, it's very important that you get in touch with the sponsors very early. Uh, for example, like we at Soft Games, we do have like a huge team. Um, like you should, okay, we have five people who are working the whole day on uh, yeah, getting in touch with the developers and, and giving them hints, okay, what you have to do better. Um, probably have to change uh, this uh, loop here because it's better for something. Um, so get in touch very early with the sponsors. Say that you are here. Say that this kind of game is coming. That sponsors can decide on for the next games which are in the queue. Okay, I take this game uh, and I don't need another one from this developer as well. So that you're not working like, I don't know, uh, four weeks for nothing and then uh, all, of, all the publishers will say, sorry, we do have already five Flappy Birds. So try to get in touch with them very early. Um, there are, again, also like a uh, lot of developers out there, not just other publishers out there, not just soft games, uh, but we are also very happy to, to get your game as well all the time. And when you say, okay, hey, no, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm not a developer, uh, I don't want to yeah, develop my games often in the near future, uh, but I want to earn also some money from these HTML5 games. I mean, like, it's easy like this. Um, especially we built, especially for this case, um, a, a catalog where you can access the whole catalog we do have. Uh, for free, without any registration, without anything to do. All what you have to do is actually building up a, a gaming portal, um, but this is technically pretty easy, I would say. There are a lot of WordPress uh, uh, um, um, templates out there. You can just access and just get started. Um, you can access the games through an RSS, RSS feed. You can access the games through uh, embed code or whatever. Uh, and all you need is just building up the page and then having your own uh, gaming portal. You can put own uh, advertisement around this and earn games, uh, earn money from the games uh, we provide here, actually. 
All right, so like a short summary for the end. Um, I hope it's, <laughs> I will make it clear to you, especially for the developer side, that HTML5 is a very lucrative alternative, especially for indie developers who are sitting for, let's say, two, three months were to, to build like a very complex freemium game. Um, HTML5 gives you um, the access um, to, let's say, make easy games with less effort, uh, so that you at, at the end of the day can make, uh, let's say, high profits or higher profits uh, as compared to a freemium game which will probably never be discovered at the end of the day. So do it today, uh, don't wait too long, uh, otherwise, like, you know, like in the, in the app space market, there are too many developers out there Go now, start now, and uh, become a very successful and um, yeah, hopefully rich and famous uh, game developer in using HTML5. Okay, that's from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Do we have any questions for Alexander? Anyone? We have one question over there. Um, yeah, to repeat the question, how about the security, safety of the, of the source code? I mean, like, I hear this question pretty often. Um, I mean, what you can do, um, basically, is to, you can put some parts of your source code uh, into the back end so that people cannot access it just from, from your server. And um, we are using, as well, some security issues that people cannot just grab um, the source code and delete our API, probably. And it's working. I mean, um, then you're safe, actually. So we couldn't find anybody who is just deleting um, the stuff. Ah, pretty easy, I would say. <laughs> cool. Right. Any other questions? Oh. All right. Well, All right. thank you so much, Alexander. Yeah, thank you very much as well. Thank you.